And here we have uh, the hammer and chisel drawers. Uh, first is my copper hammer and my on mark uh, optical center punch. There's a dot in the center here. It magnifies greatly the cross hatch that you have. You find the center, put the center punch in, strike it, and you have your first center punch mark. Uh, these are great if you don't have one. I would suggest that's a piece that you get. And I also have here an adapter because the base is so large sometimes you can't get up against a flange so I can use this little adapter to do exactly the same thing but up, get up closer to a piece This is my indie hammer. Uh, I bought this in what 70, 69, I guess it was, and I heliarched my initials in the back uh, so I wouldn't get it confused with anybody else on the team. Uh, this was used a lot on the wedge car. I was uh, Sam Posey's mechanic, so. This is taking a lot of, a lot of wheels off of Indy cars. Uh, both the uh, flat crank Plymouth that Sam Posey drove, and the uh, McNamara that Mario Andretti drove in '70. Dead blow hammer. This is my favorite hammer. I put a. Uh, wagon spoke. This is a hickory wagon spoke. This is the ferrule that goes into the hub. Uh, this thing is just my favorite hammer. I use it for almost everything. Some small ball peens, a cross peen, little brass hammer. These two are hammers that I made out of uh, wooden pallets for doing copper repose work and I keep a handle that I bought from the hardware store and that way I can trace out a handle for any hammer that I want to make. That one's in there to take up space. Here we go on to the chisels. Uh, this is what's known as a bull prick, and this end here has made countless numbers of exhaust. When you make a, a cut and you want to bring a piece tight in, where two curved pieces of exhaust come together you can put it over here and bring that piece right in. And here is another one with two different radii. There's a ring mandrel. Uh, that's a very good tapered punch. My brass punch. This piece here is out of a flathead Ford uh, for the dipstick to go in and this is used primarily for working uh, Allen wrenches. A fid so when I want to splice rope or put a loop at the end of a rope different small punches. This is a nice ball punch. Another brass. 
larger punches, smaller punches and chisels. Uh, this is a very fine, in fact that's got to be sharpened again, very fine chisel. And this one here is one that almost everybody should make. If you notice, it's flat. Trying to get it focused. There we go. It's flat on one side. The taper is all on one side. And this is excellent for shearing off rivets. Uh, if you put a rivet in, it's in the wrong place, or you want to remove it, or you're repairing a piece that has been riveted, this is the best way to remove a rivet instead of drilling them out. You have to knock the nail out so you don't hit it. Knock the nail out and it comes off with one hit. Cape chisels. Uh, here's a chasing chisel. I can make a nice radius like on veining leaves. That's the, the one I use. Here's that Korean chisel that I made out of rebar, as you can see. But this is with a rounded edge like that. This is called a walking chisel. You take and put your chisel on a line and tilt it back slightly, make a hit, and then stay in that groove and walk it slightly forward, make another hit walk it slightly forward, make another hit, and then twist it back and pull it until it stops, make a hit, make a hit, make a hit. And you can make a very straight line with that as long as you keep the chisel point engaged in the groove that you've already made. Uh, the rest of them are just chisels and punches and pry bars. Uh, here's a couple of holders. You can put a, a punch or a, a drift in these handles and that way your hand is out of the way. Air tools. That's about it in here. Next, we'll get on to my engine building drawer. And this drawer is going to be a segment all of its own because there's so many pieces in here that I've made and that a lot of you have probably never seen before. <laughs> 